Hello everyone, so in this video uh, we will learn more about uh, X-ray photoelectron spectroscopy or XPS. Uh, so when this technique was invented uh, by uh, Kai Sijban who was a Swedish physicist, uh, he actually named it electron spectroscopy for chemical analysis and over the years it's undergone uh, various changes and as of today we call it XPS. So in this video we will learn a little about uh, the working principle of XPS and how it can be used for various things. So XPS is based on uh, photoelectric effect. Uh, if uh, and photoelectric effect is something uh, that uh, Albert Einstein was awarded an old prize back in the 1920s. So this was actually based on uh, how light interacts with uh, uh, materials. Uh, and if you remember from Max Planck's equation where uh, he defined energy as h nu where nu is the frequency or uh, it's uh, c by lambda where c is speed of light and lambda is the wavelength of the light. So as per the photoelectric effect uh, if you have a piece of metal in high vacuum and if you shine light on it uh, you'll see that electrons actually get popped off from the metal and uh, if you have a circuit like this you'll be able to detect the current. Uh, so in the case of, uh, so one thing uh, that is very important in this case that uh, got extrapolated to XPS uh, is that uh, people were interested in uh, trying to uh, understand the energy of these uh, electrons because when they come out of the metal, they seem to have some kinetic energy. So people were interested in uh, trying to figure out the kinetic energy, which eventually can be used to uh, yeah, in the XPS in order to uh, determine the elemental analysis and for various other analysis. So when you have a circuit like this and once the electrons are popped off uh, when you uh, put a light on it, uh, when you actually uh, you can use a battery and then uh, apply a reverse voltage and um, so the goal here uh, is to apply enough voltage so that you prevent any uh, electron from uh, moving into the circuit. So the voltage up to which you have to put in this case uh, is called as a stopping voltage. And uh, so this voltage can actually be used to calculate the uh, energy of these uh, electrons. So by using the equation V is equal to E by Q where E is energy and Q is the uh, charge on the ions. Here uh, these are electrons so it will be E. So once you substitute the value, uh, you can say Vs is equal to Ek, which is the kinetic energy by uh, the charge on electron. And uh, so using this, you can actually calculate the kinetic energy of these electrons. Now, uh, let's uh, look at another uh, important thing. So when you have a plot of energy versus frequency, uh, and when you shine the light on the piece of metal, as you slowly increase the frequency of the light, uh, you'll see that uh, until a... Uh, particular uh, threshold value of the frequency uh, or a required energy uh, you'll see that uh, no electrons come out only beyond this uh, particular uh, value of uh, the frequency the electrons are emitted and they increase linearly as the frequency is increased uh, as shown in this plot here and in this plot if you extrapolate the uh, this uh, the, the the line uh, and uh, if you try to find the uh, y axis uh, the intercept uh, of the y-axis, the point at which uh, this line uh, intercepts the y-axis is called as the work function or it is the uh, minimum amount of energy that is required just to remove the sample uh, out of the uh, out of the uh, the material and just into the vacuum. So that means uh, it does not have any kinetic energy. So you can actually uh, determine the this particular frequency value from the equation because this line over here is a uh, it follows the it's a, it's, a, it's a linear relationship between energy and frequency. So we can use the equation y is equal to mx plus c since we know the slope is uh, phi or the work function. So when you substitute the values, uh, you will get the equation e k is equal to h nu minus uh, phi, which is the photoelectric equation. And uh, so here, if you put uh, the kinetic energy as zero, uh, you'll see that uh, the frequency uh, or the threshold frequency is phi by h, where h is uh, Planck's constant. So uh, this is the photoelectric effect is the, the basic principle uh, behind which, uh, uh, which is used in uh, the XPS. 
and now let's look at another important thing uh, let's try to understand what is work function binding energy and kinetic energy so as i mentioned before uh, when you shine light on a piece of material uh, the light get absorbed absorbed by the uh, metal and uh, then electrons are emitted from within the metal but uh, the way electrons are emitted right so the energy levels based on the definition they have been divided into uh, three classes so first the uh, electron is removed from the inner orbitals so the energy that the electron requires to get removed from the uh, inner orbital into uh, near to the fermi level is called as a binding energy the amount of energy that you require to remove the electron from the fermi level uh, to just uh, about uh, coming into the vacuum uh, that is called as a work function and then any uh, amount of energy beyond that the electron possesses is the kinetic energy so this uh, is actually a modification that has been made uh, to the photoelectric equation in order to use it in the analysis for xps so the minor change in the equation that is used for xps is that ek or the kinetic energy is h nu which is the energy of the incident uh, x ray uh, minus the sum of uh, the work function and the uh, binding energy so uh, this uh, is the equation that is used for uh, uh, getting the data that you collect from doing xps so this figure here in this uh, slide uh, actually shows the basic setup for the xps so you have a sample on which uh, focused beam of x ray is uh, shined and uh, the uh, photoelectrons are emitted from the sample after interacting with this uh, x ray and these uh, photoelectrons are collected by a detector which has an energy analyzer Uh, in order to determine the energy of these photoelectrons as well as another detector in order to count the number of uh, electrons or the intensity uh, at each of these energies so eventually uh, this uh, uh, data uh, the, that is collected by the detector can be converted into a plot of intensity versus the binding energy as i'll be showing in uh, later slides so this is a quick animation of uh, how the xps process works so you have an electron beam uh, source uh, which uh, uh, bombards the electrons onto a suitable x-ray target like copper or aluminum and uh, so this source then uh, emits x-rays which are focused onto a monochromator the monochromator then uh, uh, reflects the light onto the sample and then your sample uh, emits photoelectrons and these are collected by the uh, detector and then uh, you can convert this uh, information into intensity and binding energy and then uh, this is uh, how a typical xps spectra looks like uh, you have binding energy or kinetic energy on the x axis and you have intensity or uh, counts per second on the y axis so the peaks that you see are uh, uh, specific or uh, unique to uh, any Uh, number of elements that you have on your sample for example in this particular sample you have fluorine 1s uh, oxygen uh, 1s nitrogen 1s carbon 1s and silicon 2p so usually uh, the xps spectra that you get from uh, different samples are different because uh, different materials interact differently with uh, the uh, the x ray and uh, so the energy of the electrons that these different materials uh, uh, release are uh, different depending on how these uh, rays interact so they have different kinetic energies and so they can be uh, correlated with uh, which element they come from this is why xps is very commonly used when you want to uh, detect uh, any unknown elements in a particular sample that you have and also you have to keep in mind that xps is very surface sensitive this is because the uh, the electrons you know once they are emitted from within the sample Uh, they undergo they are emitted because of inelastic collision so the uh, mean free path uh, of these electrons uh, is uh, less than 2 nanometers so usually the electrons or the photoelectrons that are emitted from the sample are uh, from the uh, uh, about 5 to 10 nanometers from the top surface of your sample so this is another reason why xps is also known as a surface sensitive technique so usually it is used for uh, examining the surface uh, of your sample and it is a very commonly used uh, tool especially when doing surface sensors usually uh, uh, for xps the sources are uh, 
uh, copper uh, or uh, uh, aluminum uh, but there are also other sources like magnesium or uh, chromium and chromium is actually a uh, use for another uh, uh, type of photoelectron spectroscopy because it can uh, penetrate much deeper and uh, so if you have like a very thick samples uh, which you need to analyze beyond say 10 nanometers then you can use uh, chromium as your source of x-ray uh, but yeah so this concludes this video